Your president is a war criminal. Your president, hey, hey guys, there. Your president is a war criminal. Stop the suicide. Break him out. Break the war criminal out. Break the war criminal out. Break the mother. Man, is it election season already? Because that's what I saw right there. Joining me now, my friend, United States Marine, author. He has a great sub stack because he's a field reporter, maybe the best we have, called Mostly Peaceful. Julio Rosas. Julio, okay. You've been on the ground. Surprise, surprise at these protests. I can't believe that, that you have not had suffered serious bodily harm at this point in time. But what's with these people, Julio? Because I'm hearing these are a lot of the same people that were at the BLM and the Antifa protests. Man, they have a lot of causes. Right. And what's what's really what sets this apart from from the past is that you know what sparked the BLM riots in 2020 was the one case with Derek Chauvin and, and George Floyd, right? Uh, but to the Palestinians and their allies, the stakes are a lot more higher than that because to them, there's a whole nation and people that are about to be quote unquote genocided. And so that's why uh, there's this, there's basically this, this giant mobilization uh, from the far left is happening because to them, the, the stakes are a lot higher than, than what they used to be. And then you couple that fact that, yes, it's now about to be election season. And really, the one, I think one of the reasons why we haven't seen kind of the, the the more kinetic action that we saw in 2020 is just because of this all this happened right as things started to get cold within the country so i think that kind of tampers some of some of the some of the outrage but i mean we were outside the white house and things got slightly hectic um but it, it's just it's just kind of interesting to see how everything is unfolding and now you know instead of a republican being in the white house they, they they're i can tell you they really hate joe biden because they they view that he has betrayed them Julio, here's, here's something I'm a little bit confused about, something you just said and something I heard a lot. They're worried about being genocided. Who thinks they're being genocided? And this is why I ask. Is it, do they think Palestinians are going to be genocided? Hamas is going to be genocided? Muslims are going to be genocided? And I realize there's all kinds of crossover there, but Palestine itself is not a big place, only 2 million people. So how do we have this many Palestinians here, or is it about something bigger? I think it's a combination of both. Um, so, I mean, obviously, it's a faulty premise. Israel is, is not genociding the, the Gaza Strip. But we just did a <laughs> video today of civilians being allowed through Israeli lines to get out of the line of fire. And obviously, there's all these other measures that the IDF has done to prevent, um, you know, try to mitigate the civilian losses. But, you know, that aside, I think it's, again, the, the far left has been waiting for an issue to really galvanize them to get them back out there because once Derek Chauvin was found guilty on all accounts with with George Floyd that 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 kind of rage dissipated and that's why when there even has been cases of you know, police misconduct or pu perceived police misconduct that there wasn't that same level of outrage and then of course it wasn't election season either so it, this th as i was saying before it's just that there's so many crossover because they're talking about decolonization which you know they want to do here in the united states and they want to do other places they want to have reparations i heard calls for reparations to be you know instead of sending money to israel we need we need to keep it here so that we can do reparations and invest in all this other stuff so um it, it really is kind of the grievances that the BL, that blm has but except it's on steroids because again there's a religious aspect to it too that just really gets people fired up and then of course when you add an actual war into the context People, people tend to really lose their minds over over stuff like that. So, and and I can tell you, just talking to the average person there, they want Israel to to be completely destroyed. They, I mean, when you ask them if you want a two state solution, oftentimes you'll, they'll say no, no, we don't want a two state. We just want we want Palestine. Um, and so, the rhetoric is a lot more is a lot more fiery uh, in terms of it's no longer just f the police. It's it's f this entire nation and group of people. One thing I find interesting about this whole movement is how it's actually affecting and attacking Democrats as well. Here's Cory Booker and Senator Cucumber. There are so many places in our country right now where people want to make sure that we have. This is what makes America great. 
the power to protest, the power to have free speech, the power of America. 4,000 plus dead children in Palestine, 9,000 plus dead civilians. Get off the stage. Get off the stage. I don't care. The joke is on you. I had a stroke. I can't fully understand what you're saying. Yeah, I think that's really funny. United States Senator admitting he can't comprehend sentences. Either way, Julio, this is creating a domestic political problem for Democrats in ways I don't think they anticipated. No, not not at all. And that's why when you look at places like Michigan, where you have a strong Muslim community, they they have, and as in the clip that you that you played before with with what I got outside the White House, they they hate Joe Biden, and it really puts it, it really does affect the kind of how the outcome of the election I think is going to happen next year. And I understand why people have this initial reaction to say, well, why should I care what's in the Middle East? It's not our war. And that is true to a certain extent. But here's the thing: we have a lot of people in the United States that have a stake in it, whether it's one side or the other. And as we've seen here in the country. Uh, they they might show up in your face whether you like to or not. I mean, just yesterday we had this case of an older Jewish man was punched in the face and he got knocked down and he, and he died from from that. And so uh, th this is really going to uh, I think going to escalate a little bit more, especially once the the election really heats up next year. And I think it remains to be seen kind of of how Democrats are going to pivot uh, to 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 address that because again when you look at kind of where these uh, these pockets of uh, Palestinians or Arab, uh, you know, people of descent, they, they, they are typically in Democratic strongholds. And if they're not going to vote for Joe Biden, I think Democrats might want to are going to pivot and say, OK, well, let, let's have a ceasefire. Or, you know, let's see what we can do about funding, <laughs> funding for military aid. So I, I think you're right. They, they, they're, they didn't anticipate it. And they're and as, as usual, they're, they're kind of slow to kind of react to because this is this is this is grassroots. These are their most fervent supporters and these are their loudest people that are going to try to really make sure that if they don't have it their way, that they're going to do something else to, to try to mitigate that.